Okay, the floor is for you. Thank you very much. And first of all, many thanks to all of you for giving me the opportunity to present today the status of um, the project, the project um, Live Text Access, in short, LTA. You know, already is a Erasmus co-funded project that is focused on training for real-time intralingual subtitlers. We know um, that the name real-time intralingual subtitler is not used in all countries. In some countries, they prefer the term speech-to-text interpreter or live captioner. In our project, we decided to use real-time intralingual subtitler because it just has the two things on it. On the one hand, real-time, which describes the type of communication situation, and then subtitle as well, which is often or which is the end product of the, of the, um, of the job. Sometimes when we use the, the word subtitler, the, the name is also linked to some working context, like, like for instance, in many countries, subtitles are linked to the working context TV, television. In our project, we, do, we consider uh, other training contexts or working contexts. That means that the training materials that we are creating will help students to work after the training as subtitlers for live TV, but also in one-to-one -one situations where speech to text is needed, for instance, at classrooms or at meeting as work in, at work or in personal situations like when you go to them to the doctor, but also in group situations in which this is needed for instance, at conferences or cultural events. And we have added training for parliamentary sessions at national, regional, regional or local level. Okay. Is that moving? No. Okay, so um, as you know, Real-time intralingual subtitling is actually an access service because um, it facilitates communication in real-time situation. Uh, as you know, the real-time subtitler listens to the person speaking and while listening creates a written version of this uh, speech and the final written text appears as subtitles on the screen. The real-time subtitler can do this by re-speaking, which, um, which means using a, a speech recognition software, or the real-time subtitler can do this by using a keyboard. In our project, we our training materials are dedicated to the Velotype keyboard, which is um, a keyboard that allows you to write syllables, meaning usually we type single letters and with Velotype, we are able to type, um, to press different keys at the same time and create syllables instead. This makes the whole typing process, of course, faster. Before I, I move um, and talk about the project, I wanted to show you just very short videos of the two techniques. These have been made by the partners. First, uh, we are speaking. This is Julia Böchert. She is one of our partners and works in Germany at CDF Digital. Both videos have no sign, uh, sound, excuse me. So as you see, as you see, she speaks into the microphone and that whatever she dictates is turned into subtitles and she uses the keyboard to correct the text before it is displayed on screen. So this is uh, re-speaking and then velotyping. This is Wim Gavet, I'm quite sure you know him with his velotype keyboard. And like I said, he, those are the keys. They're organized according to vowels and consonants and there we see how it works he press it at the same time that's the code 
So back to the project, our goal was to harmonize quality in this field in terms of delivery and in terms of training. In 2015, our partner, European Federation of Heart of Hearing, they had already identified that the provision of real-time uh, subtitling across Europe was very different. There were countries with, with very good service and quality of the subtitles were other, in other countries, this was more difficult. At the same time, uh, scholars uh, such as Carlo Eugeni and uh, Pablo Romero Fresco, they had also identified um, differences in training. They described that some trainings across Europe only focused on some working contexts, for instance, just uh, TV or conferences. And they also identified that um, re-speaking, the technique was often more trained or often uh, trained as done typing. Um, this is actually very interesting because uh, with the re-speaking, if uh, re-speaking is more trained in, across Europe, this also means that the, the languages of the trainings are more limited. I know, for instance, that in Dragon Dictate, which is one of the softwares, is only available in seven languages, in German, in English, in French, German, English, French, Spanish, Italian, Japanese, and Dutch. So the training is not available in other languages and for other countries. So our goal was to create training materials that will help to bridge these gaps in training and ultimately to improve the quality in the delivery. To do this, we took mainly two actions. The first one was to build a balanced strategic partnership and the second one was to design these training materials that could be used across countries, across training organizations, meaning not only for higher education, but also for vocational education, and even for a person who wants to learn this autodidactically. Then different contexts, and again, different techniques, not only limited to one technique. The result of the first uh, action was our strategic partnership, which is a type of uh, partnership that is co-funded by Erasmus. These uh, partnerships bring together persons from different fields of expertise. In our case, it was three universities, one in Spain, one in Germany, and one in Italy, three service providers with a different, a different focus. For instance, SAPTI is more specialized in providing subtitles for live cultural events. Velotype is more conferences and one-to-one -one and group meetings, large meetings, and then CDF Digital, which is a broadcaster. Our um, Partners, partnership also includes two associations. On the one hand, the European Certification and Qualification Agency or association, they are experts in, certificate, in, certi in certifying training. And of course, the European Federation of Heart of Hearing to, to give us all the input needed from the end user's point of view. Then the result of the second action, these uh, training materials um, was um, what we are actually doing now is we are fin finishing actually the creation of the training materials and they are um, based on um, research data that we have gathered during the project. The training materials are open source. They will be available on the internet for any person, any institution who wants to use them. The training materials are organized in self-contained modules to make it easier to incorporate the materials in existing training courses. And they are transferable. This was um, one main focus in the design of the materials. How do, what does it mean? This means actually that we have used credits, uh, ECTS credits or ECVET to describe the workload of the training. Um, let me give you an example. 
I was um, a couple of months ago, I was reading a report from the German agency, the Erasmus agency, and they said that 81% of uh, training in Germany was recognized and by other countries in Europe because they were, the training was quantified in terms of credits and using learning outcomes. Um, there you see how important it is. So we did this. The ECTS just described the amount of hours that a student needs to invest to acquire a certain skill or a certain competence and a certain degree of proficiency. So on a, in a nutshell, um, the training modules, the training materials are organized in five or six modules. Two of them are dedicated to the technique. So the students, the student can decide to learn real speaking or velotyping. And then at the same time, they can acquire knowledge in general fields. These are understanding accessibility, you know, what is accessibility, what is disability, what are the targets, um, the end users uh, needs, linguistic competence, competence in IT, hardware, software, and of course, management and service, because we found out that most um, professionals in the field work as a freelancer, so they need to know how to communicate with them clients as well. So the idea is that the students in day one start learning the technique and at the same time start acquiring knowledge in the other general fields. If um, if an institution of a person, if, if an institution wants to offer the whole course, or this would mean 30 ECTS, which is more or less one semester at the university. But like I said, you can choose the modules you want. You don't have to use all of them. So because I said that everything is going to be open source, available for everybody around the world, I wanted to show you a bit what we are building at the moment. Um, this is our website, so anybody will be able to uh, go to the to the website ltaproject.eu and select a live subtitling course materials, and then you will go, get to this um, to this view where you have all the units. You see all the modules we've talked before. The person can then select select one of the units, for instance, understanding accessibility, and the person will be guided to the unit. Oops, it's jumping back. I'd rather not touch it. Okay, this is the first unit, and as you see, all units have an introduction video. In this case, Aida did the video for uh, our unit. We work together in this unit, Marcel, uh, Aida, and I. The student can play the introduction to see what's going on, on on that unit, and also the persons who are teaching the unit. All materials are accessible, meaning you have the sound and you have the subtitles, but we also provide the transcripts of the of the videos or the of the video lectures, and after the introduction, uh, the student can go into the teaching materials of that unit. This is pre-recorded. This is why I cannot accelerate it. Okay, so there you see the different elements in the unit. There will be a trainer's guide for the teachers and the possibility of download all the materials. So if the person chooses to go to element one, there and the student has the possibility to learn the, um, the topic about the topic. The first one is about disability models. And the idea is that the student uh, watches the virtual class, the virtual lecture. And after that, you see on the right hand side, it is possible to download the PowerPoint or the subtitles or the transcript and to take a short assessment. You see that it's just showing 
the materials of the subtitles you see there. And that's me talking for that unit. And I wanted to show you this. At the end of each, uh, of each um, video lecture, you have exercises, and these exercises are in the PowerPoint. So once the student has finished here, they can continue here with the PowerPoint. I will just stop it now. Okay, so maybe just um, to summarize what I've said, uh, we're about to be finished with the training materials. We hope that the training materials will be, will bridge this gap, you know, uh, of training for different techniques. Uh, everything will be available uh, starting September, although we already have many video lectures in our YouTube channel and, um, like I said, the materials are accessible. And one new thing that we have now is that the, our partner ECQA and Intersteno uh, have decided to create a certificate with our materials. We are create, also creating the exam questions for them. So professionals who need a certificate for working purposes, they can take uh, use the, the course materials and then go to the ECQA platform and um, undergo the exam and get a certificate uh, um, issued by ECQA and Intersteno. So there are so many things I would like to tell you today and all these details, but I can't. So uh, we would like to invite you to our next and multi uh, last multiplier event, which will take place in July 9th. It's gonna be online, it's free of charge, there you can talk to all the trainers and all the partners and ask as many questions as you want. We will present all the materials we have. So please, if you're interested or you know people who might be interested, pass on my email address and we can register them. And again, if, if, you, if you feel the training materials are useful, I would just like to ask you to share the web page or the YouTube channel link, whatever that can help us to reach as many people as possible and many institutions as possible. As for now, many, many thanks for, for listening today. Thank you very much for uh, your uh, presentation. Um, I'm looking to uh, the group, have one of you uh, a question. Teresa. I have several questions. The first one, when you talk about re-speaking, re how do you correct the mistakes? Do you correct them directly afterwards or during? Um, in the course, uh, we have um, in the re-speaking unit, you you have you have both. You have um, uh, what they called uh, before, during, and and after. In in the case, in one case, in one situation, you learn how to do it by yourself when you're re-speaking on your own. Like for example, uh, um, you saw it in the video. Uh, Julia was re-speaking and she saw the mistakes and she was correcting them on the keyboard during, you know, the creation before she pressed enter and launched, so to say, the, um, uh, the subtitle to the screen. Um, in other video lectures, you see how this also works with a, what we call a live editor, which is a second person working with the subtitler who actually does the corrections before they are then launched um, to the screen. Um, yeah. I cannot hear you, Teresa. Or Laya, who, I'm not sure who is speaking. Uh, Laila, we are speaking for uh, Teresa. Yes. Ah, Sorry. excuse me, okay. So the second question is, uh, you are talking that 
all of these are going to be studied by students during one semester? Is that um, correct? No, no. Um, we have created enough training materials for one semester. So um, let's say if my university wants to offer this course with these materials, it will take one semester to learn everything. But for example, there might be a university in Spain and they say, we already have some materials. So we just want to take the module accessibility. This module has three ECTA, ECTS, so it is shorter. It's just uh, 15 hours. So this is why we have, we have quantified each module. If you take everything, it's gonna take about one semester. If you use less modules, it will then take accordingly less. Yeah. You, you know what I mean? I'm not sure. Yes? Yeah. The data is it clear for you, the end Yeah. Okay. Are there other you questions? The students to be proficiency on this by the end of the project? Your voice is very low, Leia. Yeah, it's difficult. Sorry. Do you expect the, yeah. the students to be good at speaking or velotype when just one semester or, or, or a little bit more or less of from one semester? I think um, they will have enough knowledge to start off. But um, to be proficiency in translation, in interpreting, in real speaking or velotyping, that takes quite a bit. To be honest, uh, when I finished university, yeah, doesn't it, Teresa? Yeah. When you finished uh, studying, it depends also on the background, Laya. Laila. It, it depends on who is doing the course. If it is a person who is already re-speaking or maybe a person who has already um, learned translation or interpreting, the proficiency level of this person after one semester is going to be much higher than a student who is just starting at the university. So um, what we have tried to, to, the way we have tried to solve this is with the learning outcomes and with the workload. We described the level the person should have uh, by, the, by, by completion of the unit. But your question is, is this level enough to be very good at real speaking or very good at velotyping? Probably not, it just provides a good ground uh, to start off in the profession. This is my opinion. But again, I'm sure if you have, um, I have friends at the university who are already interpreters and they're saying, oh, I like this, I, I, I will take a look at this. They have different basic skills, you know, starting skills. Uh, what do you think? I mean, maybe would be interesting. How, how, how do you see it, uh, Laia and Teresa? Okay, I think that answered everything. Thank you. Yeah, okay. Okay, are there other questions? Yes, Mark. Your interpreter is coming or you- Can you hear uh, me? Can, can, can you hear me everyone, okay? Yes, and we can hear you, Martin. Okay. Okay, so I'm really excited about the project and see how it's going, but um, just need to think about the future because obviously at the moment, uh, there's more and more artificial, artificial intelligence, uh, speech to text um, equipment. So like, for example, now with Google um, Transcribe, mm -hmm. um, Ava, um, and, and others like that, obviously they're really taking off at the moment and, and that they potentially could be quite cheaper. And as they get better and better, they're getting better all the time. So how do we, how do you see uh, the future of your project uh, with the emergence of um, other technology? Um, I think this is a very interesting question. Um, I think that um, the skills we provide make a professional understand the profession. So 
if at any time a machine takes over the task, only the human intervention will be able to solve problems that the machine cannot solve. And for that, you need people who are well-trained. I see the same thing with translation and DeepL. I'm a translator. And since I started, everybody was telling me, oh, Rocio, in 10 years, uh, you will not have a job. And here I am after many years, more than 10 years, I still have a job. And uh, DeepL has still didn't taken away my job. Why? Because there are problems that people cannot solve and there are problems that uh, Chrome uh, transcribe cannot solve. And this is where the human intervention comes in, into place. So for me, the question, is the profile going to change? Yes, as it is in translation, but there, I don't think there's going to be a point where the, the, the machine is going to take over the whole uh, process. Aida, I think you wanted to add something. Yeah, Aida, I'd like to say something. Yeah, just Sunday, Marcel and I had an online meeting and we were using automatic speech recognition and it wrote an awful lot of rubbish. Um, so it was really hard for us to follow the meetings uh, if we were relying only on the subtitles. And the thing is also that I'm Danish. I don't have AVA in Denmark. Um, and, and we have many different languages in Europe. Uh, this also means that when we meet, we speak English, but we speak it with different accents. And also having hearing loss, some of us have speech and pronunciation problems and an automatic uh, speech recognition cannot understand what we are saying really. So um, when the automatic speech recognition will write um, a lot of rubbish, if we have a human doing the, the captioning, that human will think <laughs> that this cannot be right. So that human will put it into something that gives some meaning. So uh, as much as we recognize and, uh, and uh, like things to be faster for us all and cheaper, of course, also, we must admit that um, it is not there yet. We are not done. Okay, thank you. Um, Mark? Okay, so, so it depends on who is speaking. Um, yeah, but I, I use speech translation all the time, um, and I find it quite interesting that if it's native English speaker, if so, if I have a meeting in English and they're all native English speakers, uh, it's more accurate. No, it doesn't uh, even I, get it right then, because they live in different places in England, so they have different accents. And and the change oh, between yes, yes of of course of course yeah, but I'm yeah. talking about so from my from my experience um, with with sign language interpreters I have seen it and and, and it's it's quite interesting to see how um, the variety of you know different countries you know and you see that um, of course it would never be completely accurate I'm I'm aware of that but it's just interesting to see how and in the emergence and the of it but yeah you're right sometimes you know it does come up with complete rubbish yeah. and sometimes it's quite good and it makes sense yeah so you know it, it it's hit and miss but I, I know that you know technology improves all the time so who knows okay Rokio. Yeah, but I think this is also the beauty. You see, it's, uh, I've, I've seen this competition, human and machine, the whole time, you know, since, since uh, I finished the university, and that's uh, over 20 years ago. This is all, and I don't see it as a, um, as a competition. It's like a, it, it, it works together very well. And the beauty of it is that the more help we get from the machine, the more we can produce. And this is where really it gets, gets improving accessibility because as you say, in many contexts, you're gonna have um, test, texts that are maybe 80% and 90%, but that's enough for communicating. And before we didn't have this because 
there was no money to get them translated by humans. So I, I hope, you know, both develop at the same time and profit from each other. Is the profile of the translator or of the real speaker going to change? Of course, a bit. The, the editor, um, the live editor in real speaking is going to, you know, take over a lot of tasks that they are not at the moment. But um, and bottom line, I think um, if you have a good training where you learn what's important and what's not, um, it will help even if a machine is helping you later. And um, in my experience in the company, there are some texts that you don't want to have automatically translated in the internet because of conf confidentiality issues. So there are, will be certain contexts where you know you you will be you will not be using DeepL or you will not be using open source uh, tools for for this. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> okay, thank you. Um, are there other questions? Yes, sorry. Well, this is actually not a question, just a comment that I have been following this project and, and you have done a really good job. Oh, so, <laughs> thank you very much comment. for all of us. Thank you. Okay, uh, thank you, Rokia, for your very interesting presentation. And um, it was nice to meet you. Good luck uh, with all your work and have an interesting uh, LTA uh, meeting on 9 of July. And of course, um, when we have more information about that event, we will share it with all the platform members uh, so that they uh, can participate in that event. Everybody is very welcome. Have a nice afternoon and uh, see you at another um, meeting. Bye-bye.